Welcome to the Sports Card Talk Show. To the Sports Card Talk the Show. Sports Card Talk Show with Kevin Anderson and Lauren Walker, the, the Skull, Skull Brothers. Brothers. Welcome to episode 101 <laughs> of the Sports Card Talk Show. <laughs> like, how am I going to say that? 101, 101. Um, yeah, we've been a little busy with box battles. We uh, kind of got a little behind on talking with people. We're back on track, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're just going to start rattling off some interviews, huh? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Starting with, uh, um, well, episode 100 was uh, Ian, and now it's 101, Cards Are Luke. Yep. Uh, he's also, you said he's on YouTube and Instagram. He's yep. also on eBay. Yep. All under Cards Are. Yep. I um, guess I'm not sure if he's on Twitter. But we're so new on Twitter, I'm still finding people, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Should we uh, dial them up? Ringling ding dong. All right, we got Luke dialed up. How are you doing tonight? Good. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing good. We're doing good. So we've been uh, trying to get this set up for a little bit. We've been a little busy with some box battles, and you're busy with, you know, well, sounds like you're posting like crazy with uh, on your uh, website and stuff. So we finally made a little time. It's good to finally talk yes, to you. Yeah, perfect. Before we start chatting, though, I got to do it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Goal. I'm a Pats fan, but Skull, the Skull chant is still one of my favorite things in sports. I'll, oh, yeah. I was just thinking about this today. I'll never forget Case Keenum when he did it after the Minneapolis Miracle. He was looking up in the stands like, what – this is amazing. I mean, that was just – that was such an yeah. unreal moment. So um, I've always had a soft spot for the Vikings. Um, Randy Moss, one of my favorite players growing up. Um, so Dante Culpepper. Uh, so I'm, I'm pumped to be joining you guys and happy to, to chat sports cards. And, uh, you know, it's it's draft night too. So it's it's basically uh, – got, I got sports cards in the NFL draft and I got some, some cider. So I, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. nice. Good deal. So that's um, awesome. So whenever the Patriots, now that they don't have Brady anymore or, and Gronk's now in uh, Tampa, and if the Patriot yeah. dynasty kind of starts to falter, you can uh, jump on the Skull, Skull, uh, <laughs> Skull Brother bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been with the Pats through thick and thin. I was there in 92-93, uh, back in Bledsoe's early days. Um so, you know, while I'll never fully jump off the bandwagon, I'll certainly cheer for maybe some – definitely some teams in the NFC. I mean, Tampa Bay, I'll, I'll, I'll cheer for a little bit here and there. I'm happy to cheer for – Adam Thielen, one of my favorite players too. Um, I'm happy to cheer for the Vikings. Dalvin Cook, I'm a Florida State fan. So, um, I'll, I'll be a skull brother with you guys every now and again. Nice. Nice, nice. So, um, you're a Boston do – you, do you live up in the Boston area? Yep. I live up in New Hampshire. I'm 45 minutes north of Boston, born and raised. Okay. okay. So I've been immersed. In, I've been lucky enough. I'm, I'm 35, so I've, I've been lucky enough to have my whole adult life uh, being wildly spoiled with championships. <laughs> um, I don't yeah. like to brag about it too much, but it's certainly been fun. And, um, you know, I did. Go, I went to college in Cleveland, so I have a lot of Browns fans who are uh, – a lot of friends who are Browns fans. And I've tried to explain to my friends around here, like, listen – it's going to get real ugly real quick. And um, I, I I have a lot of faith in Belichick to build the team. I think – actually, I really think Jared Stidham could be a good player for the Pats. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely going to be an odd time here uh, in New England. A lot of those fans for the past 20 years were probably going to jump ship. And, you know, we'll see you later, I guess, because uh, I'm still a Pats fan through and through, whether we were uh, winning or losing. I have I have always en – I've enjoyed the Patriots uh, – uh, um, dynasty the last 20 years because uh you yeah. know without the evil empire there is no star wars so uh you need <laughs> it, it's been i've i've seen other dynasties come and go and i hated them whenever it happened like the bulls dynasty everybody yep. like talking about the last dance you know this past week but uh, i hated it and now that it's yeah. gone i kind of pine for those days i pine for the days of the of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, so it's been a, it's been a joy to see what the Patriots have been able to do because it's I, to me I don't think it'll ever be done again. I, I'd be shocked if it would. I mean, it's twenty years of 
you know, 19 out of 20 years, they won or 18 out of 20 years, they won the the AFC East. The one year they didn't, Brady was hurt. Uh, mm. It's pretty unprecedented, especially in the days of, of free agency. Um, a lot of quarterbacks not and, and coaches leaving. I mean, how often do you see a coach and a quarterback stick around for 20 years? Mm-hmm. So, um, right. you know, it's, it's going to be um, weird to see Brady play in a, in a box uniform um, and Gronk too, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. I, I think that, I, I honestly think that both Belichick and Brady knew that they weren't going to win with Brady. Um, and I think it was, it was an amicable breakup, amicable breakup. And, you know, that's just me guessing because who knows what, what goes on at Foxborough behind the scenes. But, right. um, you know, 20 years is, again, absolutely spoiled to have that. So um, we'll <laughs> right. see what happens. It's going to be interesting. And and the, the real neat thing is the Pats are going to have a lot of uh, – cap space in 2021 so i think this is kind of going to be a bridge year and we'll see what they do in the draft tonight uh that'll that'll be telling as well i think it's i keep on picturing that trying to picture tom brady in a bucks uniform and for whatever reason i'm trying i picture him in the creamsicle uniform and not in their new uniform even though they have yeah. one creamsicle in like 20 some years you know <laughs> right. right yeah we'll say i it, it's gonna be i mean he's a handsome gentleman no matter what jersey he's wearing right <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we touch a little bit on uh just briefly on your collecting history i think a lot of us share similarities getting away and coming back but touch on yours a little bit and then we'll dive into um there's a couple things we're going to dive into as soon as you uh, get done with that cool yeah uh i've been collecting since i was probably five or six years old uh i mentioned i'm 35 uh, i remember getting my first pack of football cards uh from my uncle Pro set, you know, that that terrible 1990 91 set. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, growing up as a kid, it was always when I played football, my dad said, Hey, every tackle you get, I'll get you a pack of cards at the corner store. Um, and you know, that was all through elementary school. I collected football and basketball mainly. Um, and then in high school, when all my buddies were uh selling their cards so they could buy pot, um, I was <laughs> buying their cards. <laughs> so, I got a lot of great stuff for cheap, um, held on to it and, you know, it really didn't do anything with it. Cause at the time eBay wasn't huge. I wasn't selling on it. I wasn't going to card shows. We didn't really have many near me. Um, and then I went to college, stopped collecting, came back and got introduced to eBay, started selling, did that for a little bit, took some time off, got back into it because Kyrie Irving signed with the Celtics and that, you know, you know, a hook, line, and sinker I was in. You know, that, that, that one card gets you going. And um, it's been – so since like 2017, 2016, it's just been – it's really my main hobby. It's what I spend all my money on. Um, I've grown into – you know, I, I've, I've learned what I should be collecting, what I shouldn't be collecting, what I should be flipping to pay for my collection. Uh, so my main PC is Brady. Um, I mentioned to you guys before this, I don't want to collect – all of his hits. I don't want to collect all his number of cards. I want to collect all of his cards. Uh, that's kind of how I've been collecting my whole life. And uh, I presently have 1,175 different Tom Brady cards, um, anywhere from his rookie to an autograph to uh, a patch from his rookie year, um, numbered cards, graded cards, non-graded cards. I mean, anything with Tom Brady. I have a felt uh, from Top Turkey Red. It's like this big. It's a piece of felt. It's like a blanket weird um but, you know anything anything with brady on it i want to collect uh, i'm a huge fantasy football player so a lot of guys i've just grown to like through fantasy football so my goal is to collect like one of their autos uh, or their rookies um and then you know hall of famers uh and my main pc is football i dabble in basketball a lot of the 90s guys like sean kemp charles barkley um penny hardaway larry bird uh, some of the newer Celtics, um, and I always try to get like the rookie, like that 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 showcase piece. So like I have like a Luka Doncic prism rookie because I think that's just going to be a huge card, like kind of like the '89 Griffey. I have the '89 Griffey. Um, you know, <laughs> I have the Zion Williamson um, uh, prism rookie. Um, I, I like to because I'm a collector at heart. Um, while I have a website, Cardsar.com, and eBay's right there, are, are in our Instagram name where we sell cards um, that's more just to really give back to the hobby, give back to the community. Um, all the money that we're making literally goes right back into cards. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it, it's been fun so far and um, yeah, that's just 
that's my story. I mean, it's just been, I've really enjoyed it since I came back and I've made a lot of uh, good connections, good friends. And, um, you know, we're building a relationship here, which is a huge reason why I wanted to get back into the hobby. So that's, that's my story. Uh, um, you know, you mentioned whenever you were a kid, your dad would pick you up uh, packs at the, at the corner store. Uh, and that's how you collected cards back in those days. And now, you know, you've got a you've got a website. We're we're talking via a uh, uh, live chat here or whatever. And you know, you you've got ways to collect cards now that you never had before, which is uh, super cool. And, uh, and what's I, fun I, about that too is a lot of those cards that I always wanted, like you know, like the Beckett like top ten back in the day. Oh yeah, all those cards. As a kid, you're like, I want that card so bad, and now you can get it, and it's great. Um, like I picked up a Jerry Stackhouse Topps Draft Redemption card. It's 2020, you know, and I'm picking up a card from 1995 that, as a kid, I was like, God, I love this card. Yeah. Um, Kevin Garnett Topps rookie, same thing. I always want a card, but I could never get it. The the Griffey 1989 Upper Deck. The opportunity to get it now is great, and so. Um, it's been really fun just kind of reliving a lot of those 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 cards that I really wanted as a kid um, and and now having them. And uh, it's been and, and a big part, too, is like all the autographs of those guys that you watched as kids. Like now they're available, which is awesome. So Wait, when you brought uh, up, again, it's been when you brought up Stackhouse, I was actually looking at I like to buy cool looking autographs. And when Stackhouse mm-hmm. has room to sign, he has a really nice, oh, yeah. nice signature, man. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite autograph is uh, Taewon Taylor from the Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've bought a guy, few, but it's just, I bought a few a of cool those. Auto. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and that's the kind of stuff I like to collect. I mean, I don't, I don't always go for the high end stuff. I just like unique stuff. I mean, I picked up a Sean Bradley autograph because he was seven <laughs> six, and I thought that was really cool as a kid. And he played for the 76ers. so like, you know, I, I just enjoy that. I enjoy unique items. Um, it's it's again it's it's what you make it you know we say one of our mottos is how do you collect you know Panini says who do you collect we say how do you collect because really I mean how do you collect that that's what makes things interesting you can have a conversation for thirty minutes about your about your collection you know are you collecting a player collecting a team collecting unique things it all depends and that's what makes this hobby fun mm-hmm. for sure for sure today I've been posting all day game game worn or game used. Ma- Material cards because uh, yep. a friend of ours is making a push towards Panini to, you know, quit with the, you know, we want more game used. We want more yeah. game worn. And uh, because that's something that really drives him, his collection is right. his game used. I'm, I'm not a humongous patch guy, but if I do want to, I, I quite honestly hate pulling that two dollar relic from you know that's your hit in a in a box yeah. of cards or whatever yeah right <laughs> yeah i mean i try to do more of like um like the patchy cards like the chunky cards you know yeah. multiple colors um one that, that i've just fallen in love with and you guys are going to appreciate this card i pulled out i pulled out some uh, vikings cards but um the impeccable is oh. one of my favorite sets because um this is a helmet and that's a patch. Now it's it's player worn because it's a rookie. It's an yep. on-card auto. It's a good looking card. Um, you know, I I'm I'm kind of the same way. Like I don't want that, you know, three dollar patch card. Um, you know, Jarrett Stidham's rookie premiere, like, okay, cool. He wore that or he might have not worn it. I think the problem with game worn is Panini's so cheap <laughs> that they're not gonna pay for the, the jerseys. And all these guys nowadays are swapping jerseys on the field. If you think about it, there's only 16 jerseys, you know, per season at a minimum. So it's kind of tough for them to pick those up. However, when they do stuff like put a Mitchell and Ness jersey in there, that just infuriates me. Like if you're buying a, a box of Flawless or, you know, a $600 plus dollar box and you get a Mitchell and Ness patch, it's like, what? And they have the out where it says player worn. Okay, what player wore it? You know, there's that there's that infamous picture of – uh Mark Ingram with like a million jerseys. <laughs> yep. and he's wearing a Jeremy Shockey jersey. It's like, so, <laughs> you know, the patches have kind of jumped the shark, unfortunately, um, for the memorabilia. I mean, you're seeing cool stuff now, like the cleats and all that. But uh, 
you know, after a while, I guess they, they're going to run out of ideas after a while, right? Mm. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so uh, we talked a little bit about um, one of your latest videos, and there was a, a, a bit of an audio issue, but it kind of led us to talking about it here, which I think is kind of fun because yeah. it's, it seems to be everywhere, um, and it's just the grading thing. And uh, you were going to... Mm-hmm. I think you did your first submission to SGC. Is that what it was? Yeah, I did. Um, so I'm going to put the disclaimer out here that I'm actually not a huge grading fan. Um, I, I see the value in it. I get it. Uh, it just is it's very subjective. Um, you know, one guy might be having a bad day or one guy <laughs> might not like this team and say, oh, I'm going to give it a nine and not a 10. Okay. Right. At the same time, you know, I do like the idea of it because – you're selling a card and you're selling it. If it's a 10, you're selling it as a 10 because that's what it is. That's what a a certified grading company says it is. So at least there's some common ground on the value um, between seller and buyer. So um, yeah, I recently uh, started, uh, and by the way, I'm also not affiliate SGC whatsoever. Um, They were introduced to me by a friend. Um, I, I, had my first submission. I submitted about 20 cards and I had a great experience. Um, pretty easy to use. Um, price point is right in line with PSA at $10 a card. So a dollar less than, uh, than PSA and the turnaround time. I mean, that's the big thing right now. The turnaround time's great. Uh, it took me, I think by the time I shipped my cards and got them back, it was about a month. So, you know, right now I have 20 cards out to PSA and before this COVID-19 crap happened, they had a million card backlog and they were looking at what, six months um Mm -hmm. if you're trying to flip a card you know you you need it sooner than six months but at the same time you want your cards back you want you want to just get your um get your you know just have them in your possession they're your cards so sgc is interesting because they're still open um and you know i was on the fence at first until you know this is a an example of a uh, sgc 10 dwayne haskins um this is a green auto number to 10, got a 10 uh, auto and uh, 10 for condition. But at first I was on the fence because of the slab itself. But once you got it in person, I actually, it really pops. I think it's a really nice slab. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've got some old, they've been in the vintage game forever. Like old, old time guys, old timers like SGC more than they like Beckett. Like your, you know, your guys that collect old time baseball cards or football cards and i have some old viking you know tarkenton i don't know i don't have a mm-hmm. Tarkenton. and i think i got like a marshall and maybe page and some of those guys anyway i really like the black slab i don't like what they've done with the new label though i'm, I'm not a big fan of the mm-hmm. of the humongous block numbering yeah i can see that the one thing i like about that though So a thing over here, I got Beckett, I have PSA and I have SGC and I was looking at it. And like the one thing I don't, uh, that I do like about it though, is, is how they do the, the description. Um, so I'll put a little bit closer here. I mean, the description is nice in the sense that it, it's all right there. Uh, mm-hmm. It's pretty clean. It's pretty nice, but you're right. At the same time, I saw somebody say, it looks like they're screaming at you that that's the grade, right? Yeah. So it's a 10. Um <laughs> I, I get that. I definitely get that. I think part of that, though, is everybody's just so used to, you know, PSA or Beckett where the, the numbers are kind of the same. And a lot of people, you know, they, they struggle to do – they struggle to accept something new. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously right now SGC is the only game in town that's open. Um, but I think that as a, as a hobby, I mean, you can certainly have three – grading companies. PSA has got a million card backlog and mm. Beckett's not guaranteeing uh, delivery time. Um, but I'd actually say, I mean, I like, I like PSA's labels. Um, I actually think that Beckett, I don't like Beckett's labels at all. I mean, they kind of chip a little bit. So you can see right here, this is the Keenan Allen. I mean, I like the subgrades, but you look on the back and even the back, um, sorry, <laughs> even the back right here is chipping a little bit, uh, oh, the no. actual label itself. So, you know, it, 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 it's all also a point of, you know, what do you prefer? What do you like? Um, but like I said, with SGC, you know, we're going to start doing group submissions through cards are um, $10 a card. You're going to get your cards back in about a month. Um, I think that they're, I'm not going to say they're the future. 
um, but I certainly think that they're uh, they're they're working hard to to get a, not away from the vintage, but to also add uh, modern to their portfolio. And, right, definitely. Uh, if you can get if you can get your card slabbed in a timely fashion, and SGC continues that, then I don't see a reason why you know people would start to to not go there. I mean, I've I've seen already in the industry a lot of people go the way of SGC because you know they have cards they have a zion williamson that they want to flip so you can't go to psa you can't go to beckett where are you going to go uh, you sell mm -hmm. a raw or you leave and you leave a couple hundred dollars on the table or you send it to sgc and you get that psa 9 value um and i've actually started to see michael jordan i think michael jordan sgc 10 was going for right around the same price as a, as a jordan psa 9 psa 10 so um yeah i just yeah saw, I, I think that they're i just say i just saw um I don't know if you watch or listen to House of Jordan, but they just posted a card um, that an SPC 10 actually went for a more than a PSA 10. Just yeah. I think today they just posted that. And they said, wait, what's well, going on here? Well, here's an interesting thing. Again, we're talking about timing. Um, you know, if you're going to wait, I mean, right now they have, you mentioned it, um, the, uh, the Bulls documentary is going on right now, The Last Dance. And, um, Obviously, people are far more interested in Michael Jordan stuff because he's just the only thing going on in sports right now. So if you can get your cards turned around in a month as opposed to six months, you got to do the opportunity. Oh, hold on. I got my daughter making an appearance. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Say hi real quick. Say hi real quick. Then you got to go. Hello. Hi. Do you like football cards? So you like football? Football. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> her favorite thing is to go to the mailbox and she gets the little uh the little yellow packages and she says you got football today i'm like yeah oh, daddy got football today. <laughs> it's fun when they know um, what you're for. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly oh. so um but anyways but again just the fact that you can get those cars turned around i yep. think is a huge huge win for sgc and it's uh mm -hmm. again they're putting out a nice product um you know again i it's all about the eye of the beholder um but yeah, these were these were the results for my submission. That unfortunately um, there was no audio to on our on our YouTube channel. So look at that. Yeah, that happens sometimes, man. Yeah, right. and again, I, I actually the the big the big card the big cards that I got that I posted on our Instagram page. I was really pumped about, and I was really pumped for. And I, I didn't wasn't able to talk about this. Well, I talked about it, you just couldn't hear me. Was <laughs> I got these two Kobe Bryant tens. Oh, and I've had these I've had these cards since 1996. Um, oh wow! So <laughs> I've had these cards for just, you know, as a kid. I wanted to make sure they're in good condition, um, and I sent them in just because I was like, you know what? I want to get them slabbed. Uh, Kobe's a legend of the game. This is obviously after he passed away, and uh, when they came back ten, I was like, wow, holy! Yeah, for dude, that long. And, wow. When you yeah, do your, when when you do I, your... I, I remember pulling. I remember pulling them. Yeah. When you do your group submissions, do you do you are you uh, cleaning and prepping them too, or are yeah? So I'll 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 take them in. Um, I'll do my best job cleaning. I'm 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 definitely not a professional cleaner, but I'll certainly you know do my best. Um, I will get them ready. I'll put them in the card savers, and I will do all the uploading. Um, I'll do all the shipping to SGC. I'll do the shipping back from SGC, um, and then once the cards come back. I will ship to you at a cost, you know, to be determined. Um, so pretty much all you got to do is send me your cards. Um, there's an option that SGC offers to, um, you know, a minimum grade. So if you say, I don't want um, anything lower than a nine, you can get that. However, um, they still will charge you full price because they do, you know, everything from the, um, they'll do the, uh, they'll take a look at the card. They take pictures of each card and then they'll grade each card. Um, and so even if it gets, say you want, you know, nothing less than a nine, I had two cards come back um, that didn't hit the nine threshold. They still came back in the penny in the time um, card savers and they had, you know, less than nine. Um, but unfortunately still had to pay the $10 for each card. So, um, you know, and, and again, I mean, I, I was taking a look at the prices of this, you know, these Kobe Bryant cards and, you know, before they were slabbed, they were probably $30, $40 cards. And then after slabbing, they're probably almost $300 cards. So, right. um, 
it's wild. I mean, I, I, that's that's part of my PC. Um, I won't sell his stuff right now. Um, I well, some of the cars that really mean a lot to me, I won't sell of his right now. I do have a couple up in our store, but um, you know, I think that again, and, and like right now, I have um, a Fleer metal card out to PSA. When am I going to see that? You know, mm -hmm. it might be, it might not be till 2021 if I see that card. So, quite the um, shift, obviously, with SBC being the only one open right now, we'll be curious to see it. Wow, we got a what's that? Wow, we, got a, we got a little back feed. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they can keep up. You know, it seems like a lot of people are shifting that way with it being the only one open right now, right? Yeah, so see, um, I, I have like uh. I not only had two, but I have three Fran Tarkenton rookie cards that aren't graded. And yep. I bought them. I got them all at a fairly good price. And then like six six months to a year later, um, I start seeing reprints. And then I start seeing uh, aged reprints. And I'm going, oh, man, are these uh, – I think with like your, you know, cards nowadays, especially like – your high dollar cards and it doesn't take anybody to with a decent printer and some cardboard to to right. you know make fakes so i i think that's another great reason to get cards graded is the, to authenticate them you know absolutely i mean uh, how how and I, i'm not, I, I never dive into vintage i'm more modern um, but still i mean now you're seeing a lot of tom brady cards uh, his bowman rookie is a is one that gets um gets reprinted a lot um and you know patrick mahomes people are going to start reprinting his stuff soon enough so uh that's a good thing about sgc that i've noticed is you know they they started off as a you know they call it's called sports sports card guarantee llc they started off more as a um certification company you know they verified the card was real so you have that that level of you know there's i have a few tom brady cards that um, definitely won't be better than sevens, but I kind of want to have them slab just so I can show that they're real, you know? Yeah, right. Yep. Because I'm more there are so many for things. grading. I'd be more yeah. interested in that. Grades, I mean, obviously, if I was going to be reselling something, but, you know, if I if I was going to go buy a Jordan, I, I only really want to buy a graded one because <laughs> right. all that stuff right. is, you know, easily faked, you know? I, I have, I probably have, five six seven hundred graded cards i've never submitted one because yeah I, and i never submit because i'm too busy buying cards that i want <laughs> i don't want to spend money on the cards that i already have to grade them and right i think right i think a good place to start would be those tarkentons though yeah yeah, yeah. my dad de definitely yeah. and, and quite honestly to get into a i don't i don't know how much one card would be to grade through a company but like I've I've definitely uh, am interested in doing like a like a group. you know group group thing like that you know I'm also afraid to actually like pre prepare the card myself like taking it out of the, <laughs> the case that it's been in for you know since I've gotten it I just don't it's like taking it out you're just it's cleaning it and and all of that scares yeah. me I don't want to screw it up. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. It's it, it's definitely a little um, a little scary. Um, it, at the same time, like you know, I was always very hesitant because, to your point, like instead of spending a hundred dollars on grading cards, I want to spend a hundred dollars and buy cards. You know, yeah. um, but you see, I mean, if you see the benefit to, you know, that one card, like perfect example. Um, I picked up a Lamar Jackson Contenders Optic autograph number forty nine, I think. Um, last off season before he blew up and yeah, I bought it for like 50 bucks. Um, and season the guy's blowing up. He's been awesome. Right. So I looked at the ungraded price and I could have sold it for like, you know, $700 or something like that. And then I looked at the greater piece. I'm like, if this comes back in nine and a half, 10, this is going to go for over two grand. So it's like, <laughs> you know, what do you do? You right. take the chance. Like I, I looked at that card so many times. I was like, you know, dissecting. I was like, oh, there's a little smudge there. A little, and I sent it in. Um, I sent it in and eventually got it to, to BGS, and it came back a nine and a half. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. and uh, <laughs> and I, I flipped that for a pretty penny before they lost in the playoffs, fortunately. And um, 
and that but that was kind of like the seed money for cards are so it's it's you know you take the good with the bad um oh, yeah. you know the, also at the same time i had a awesome tom brady card number 88 from 2002 was the elite the elite status die cut and i thought i was going to come back a nine or a ten i was pumped i'm like this is gonna be such a big money card it was still gonna stay in my pc and we came back a six i was like oh. <laughs> you know yeah. I was like, ah, but with it being a PC card, I mean, I was disappointed, but I, yeah, whatever. It's not a big deal. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm, uh, so. yeah. I, me and Kevin, <laughs> Kevin and I go around and around about mm -hmm. how I need to, you know, just grade a few cards to get the wheels turning. And I need yeah. to, um, I've been talking about doing a, a thousand card submission to Com C for, Two years. Two years. <laughs> um, I've got a, a mince, a mince Teddy Bridgewater collection. And now that he's back back in the spotlight, Kevin's like, yep. Dude, if you just sold a few of your cards, you wouldn't even miss them. Like I could sell half my cards and he still, wouldn't even know they were gone. Yeah. My my collection <laughs> is is uh, something to marvel at. I, I would say without bragging. I don't think that's a break. No, do that's you? not a break. <laughs> <laughs> he literally would not know. Like if I came here one day when he wasn't here, sold half of his Teddy Bridgewaters, he would have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. short of me handing well, you know, up, you definitely, gotta send, me, <laughs> definitely gotta send me some pictures of your collection. I'll take a. I'd love to take a look because I just that's the thing I love. You know, play you're passionate about a team you're passionate about. Um, just seeing that collection. One of my good buddies who I I got into this. Uh, he's on Twitter at, at sp the Titan. Huge Titans fan um, and was always a sports fan and just never really – he collected cards as a kid and he saw what I was doing with cards are. And um, immediately he's just like, you know, this is awesome. Because what's cool about cards is you have a connection. You have a, a, an emotional connection to these guys. Um, and, you know, you want to see them win. You want to see them succeed. In in some cases, if you're trying to flip cards, you, you want to see the guy succeed because you want to say, I, I won this gamble. Um other guys you want to see succeed because you're like, you know, I got his cool rookie card and I just like the player. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to hear about, you know, a, a collection like that. Um, I feel, I, I hope that I have a similar, people have a similar response when I tell them about my Tom Brady collection. Um, oh yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I, I want people to like my Teddy Bridgewater collection someday as much as they probably like your Tom Brady collection. <laughs> I know it, it's crazy because I I was getting I mean before he they won the Super Bowl against the I think I think it was the Falcons Super Bowl that people were really like holy crap we got to collect his stuff because I was buying stuff for dirt cheap off eBay winning cards for like three four dollars a pop and now I mean like a perfect example is this card his first year Prism right I got this card for like twenty bucks on eBay midway through the season last year. I don't know where this card's going for like $150 right now, $200. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I mean, it's the first year prism. It's kind of cool to see football start to kind of go the way of basketball. Right. Um, but, um, you know, like a lot of this stuff, like, you know, his, his silver prism, I'm really curious to see like what happens to some of the, you know, this is 2016 silver prism PSA 10, um, 2017 prism PSA 10. And the interesting thing about this is, you know, I, I mentioned that I like to collect, you know, those cards that are like, you know, cornerstone pieces. Well, I have the Mahomes. Um, it's an eight, unfortunately, because it has the bubble right here above his shoulder. Oh, yeah. um, but, you know, it's kind of like the, the 86, 87 Fleer, you know, because that was Jordan's rookie year. Will all those cards just go up in value because it's such a sought after set? And I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. It, it's, um, you know, Brady stuff has taken off recently, and you know my my portfolio, if you may have it, is is definitely seeing the benefit of that. But it's um, yeah, it's been an interesting time um, with Brady stuff. Um, long gone are the days of me getting stuff for dirt cheap. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, right, right. I I go. I still have Teddy Bridgewater in my feed on eBay, and I go in there and I look. I'm like, yeah. oh, these people are they're like. All everyone's asking ridiculous buy it now prices, and if you get it on auction, it's going for ten times more than what I was paying for a Teddy a year ago. Just right. the speculation on him being a starter has uh, pushed his cards, you know. Oh yeah, I got these for about a buck a piece last year. Yep, yep. 
this is prison rookie. I mean, what I've, what I, so, you know, I've been <clears throat> back into this hardcore for, you know, three, four years now. Um, and I've been really understanding the market a little bit better than I ever did before. And I know like get the prison rookie, you know, the prison rookie is the bell of the ball. So last year when he was playing with the, the, the saints, I was like, you know what, let me just pick up a couple of his rookies for dirt cheap and see what he does. And, you know, that's kind of in my, I'm going to sit on a pile and see what happens. And, you know, it's one of those things where if he does well, I'm going to flip it and all the money I get for it is going to go back into my Brady PC, I'm sure. So it's, um, you know, I'm I'm definitely not trying to, uh, to, to pay my mortgage with this, but it's, it's definitely (laughs) been a fun hobby. The people are listing those at 30 bucks, buy it now price on eBay. So it's those prism rookies. It's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, and I, and and I, I've got a intended to do it. I probably should. <laughs> I I wouldn't doubt I got like a hundred and fifty to two hundred total Prism Teddy Bridgewater rookie cards <laughs> from uh, you know all the variations to the silvers yep. to the yep. green and yellows to the orange to the yep. the blue. Yeah, I've got I've got a you know one of those little two hundred two hundred count uh, boxes mm-hmm. full full of those i'm uh yeah teddy's teddy's the like he only played for the vikings for two years and he's probably my all <laughs> time favorite quarterback <laughs> yeah. so how, do, how do you guys how do you guys buy your cards do you guys go to shows do you guys buy on ebay like what what's your your go-to ebay com c we pick we went up to our we have two card shows a year in town i mean kevin go up there Normally, you know, you because we're we're homers and buying homer cards for the most part. Um, yeah. You know, they've got they've got Viking cards priced, uh, you know, <laughs> double double oh, yeah. to triple what oh, yeah. you get them on eBay. So don't. But yeah. this last time we went up there, and I I kind of shifted my focus. Uh, like I've opened up my scope to. Uh, we did the Mount Rushmore series, so collecting those hall of fame type guys and 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 i'm not like going crazy like i do on biking cards i specifically am either shooting for you know a really nice on card auto or Mm -hmm. or a nice looking rookie card of of the old timers yeah no that's that's the way to go i mean i i Again, I mentioned, you know, being an avid fantasy football player, I try to collect a rookie autograph of almost every player I like. Um, sure. You know, the Keenan Allen was an example. You know, again, I I ran into this. I wasn't looking for Keenan Allen, but I was like, I don't have his rookie card. And this is Topps Chrome. It's graded nine and a half. Like, I got it for like 20 bucks. But mm-hmm. the one card, and you guys will appreciate this. I mentioned this player early. I picked up this card for my birthday. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. Lift it up a little higher. Oh, there we go. There we go. Is that it? <laughs> Randy Moss. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Tato, Wallace, you know, so, um, again, I loved Randy Moss when he was with the uh, the Vikings, but I had to I, ha- I had to have his auto, and it was either going to be the autographics from his rookie year or a Patriots jersey, and I, I went with the Patriots jersey, and that was just uh, – that's that's an instant top five favorite card of mine. I mean, it's, it's – I think uh, huge check off the PC. Oh, for sure. And I think that's a great place. Um, I think I think that's a great place to bring this to a close. We uh, we're way over what we would try to keep it at, <laughs> but we've been having a lot of fun talking with you. And, <laughs> yeah. And we got to get ba- get you back on, man. We got to see what happens when uh when your boy Brady's a buck. Maybe we'll you know when if they have the season, we'll have you back on. <laughs> and uh, absolutely. Why? Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, sorry if I talked too long and, and made us go long, but um, oh, you know, I said it. Oh, I just happened to look. Yeah, um, like, wow, yeah, we usually try and keep it in the twenty to twenty-five minute range, and we're pushing forty. But it didn't seem time like flies when you're having fun. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, in the, I, in the meantime, I want the interview to be over. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime, though, uh, you guys can check out our website www.cardsar.com. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff up there trying to become a resource for the hobby. Um, you can find us on in- Instagram at cards are C A R D S C Z A R. Yeah. Perfect, man. And uh, that'll bring episode 101, uh, to a close Luke at cards are here. He already told you where to find him. 
Yep. School brothers out. <laughs> <laughs>